Just one robot is needed for our series semi-finals to join the likes of Chaos 2 with its power. Pussycat on the attack. Firestorm can set the arena ablaze. Snake 2 with the flipper. Dominator 2 with the pickaxe. Tornado, a whirlwind force. Terminal 2 with the jaws. Weaving cheese, a lifting device. Splinter with the scoop. Stinger with the great mace. The mousetrap can spring a surprise. Spawn of scutter scuttles about. The wild things can... Welcome a one-time naval man, but now he hates belly buttons, Craig Charles. When television was invented, people were worried that it'd end up providing nothing more than pure oil entertainment. Whoops. 75 years on, and the best thing on the box is Robot Wars. OK, so it's hardly sophisticated or educational, but when does anybody get mashed up with a chainsaw on question time? Exactly. What people want to watch is wanton destruction. Grown men and women using remote control fighting machines to bash it out for a place in our series semi-finals. John Logie Baird may be turning in his grave, but at least he won't be turning over the channel. Let's find out who's getting pure aisle this week. Craig, Mr. Baird, will be scared of our seated machine Cerberus number 18 against Onslaught back for the last series of newcomers. Terrible. And remember, Hypnodisc, our second seed. Frightening for the Predator and the Razorblade. They're in the pits right now. There is a key robot in this melee, and I certainly wouldn't want to be a Razorblade. Hello, team. Hi. Oh, yeah. What are you powered by? The lift is powered by a ABS pump from a Ford Granada, and the uh, motors are powered by 24 volt. Say a couple of prayers. I wouldn't want to be them. I also wouldn't want to be Predator. The uncle and nephew team from Manchester. This is a great-looking robot. Well done on the design. Very interesting. Check this out. Knitting needle teeth. I think they'll need more than knitting needles when they're up against the robot, which is the number two seed. Everybody involved in Robot Wars wants to know what's going to happen this wars with Hypnodisc. The Rose family are back again, and they've righted a few wrongs from the last wars. Number one, everyone wanted to know if they would come back with a self-writing mechanism, and voila. Chaos 2, watch out. Talk me through the changes you made to the disc. Uh, we've added a much more powerful motor, so it can accelerate the, uh, the disc up to about 750 RPM in about three and a half seconds. So it's, it, you get there twice as fast, twice as, fast. as you did last year, yeah, and, and go you've got 50% extra yep. speed in the disc. So these are going to hit you at about 70 miles an hour. 70 miles an hour the tip, yep. In my opinion, this is the robot to keep your eye on. Now, I'm not one to start a fight, but let the wars begin! From Cambridge, Ravenclaw. Updated after a close shave in the last series, aluminium and steel, a hydraulic lift and spike, the hydraulics from a saloon car braking system. Will this razor blade be all over its opponents like a rash? Hello, we're the Razorblade team. I'm Paul, this is Steve, this is Howard. This is our robot. It's fitted with a hydraulically powered flipper, which uh, runs at 2,400 pounds per square inch. It's driven by two 24 volt electric motors. And uh, we've replaced the chainsaw that we had on the back last year with a spike weapon to give us a bit more maneuverability and a bit more weight to play with. We're hoping to do well. If we get mullered by the house robots, we're happy with that as well. Rob Bambury and seated number two, Hypno Kick. Very quick at up to 20 miles an hour, powered by those three motors and hugely destructive with a 750 RPM spinning disc. The shell is aluminium and mild steel to engineer precision. In the last series, very little could live with Hypno Disc. The singular most destructive robot we've ever seen. Crash and bash and smash, little left of anything else. It ripped and tore its way through the early battles. But ultimately, the Rose family was bettered by Chaos 2, the machine that went on to win the last series. They got in with a wedge attack and stopped that spinning disc. Then, flipping Hypno Disc, they realised there was no streaming. The disc comes back with one this time. Will that be the difference? Hi, I'm 
today, the team captain. This is Derek and our father, Ken. This is our robot, Hypnodisc, based on the same design as Last Wars. A number of improvements we made on the self-writing arm to get us back on our wheels. Uh, the much stronger teeth and far more powerful disc. From Manchester, Redditor. New magically powered weaponry here, a lifting fork at the front, a spiked pickaxe at the rear, the head comes from a wok, the dreadlocks from a beaded curtain, the chassis from the armour plating of a police van. Hi, my name is Barry, this is Stephen, behind me is Christopher, we are Team Predator, this is our robot, the Predator. This is a fun lifting ram powered by CO2, and it's very speedy and very deadly. The head, we have got movable jaws, we've got flashing lights, we've got strobe lights, we have got dreadlocks. It's lasting the tail of its powered ice pick. Razor blade, captained by Paul Hart, the driver, Steve Scotch, the tactical expert, and Howard Andrews with a beard. His job is uh, panicking, he says. There's Hypnodisc, the all-powerful Dave, Derek, and Ken Rose. Ken in the middle. And finally, we've got the Predator. Barry Willits, the man there at the controls. Three, two, one. Razor blade immediately bisecting the two opponents, but it's all about Hypnodisc and the damage it can do. Immediately slanting off the body there of the Predator, and again Hypnodisc immediately on the attack. That weapon will hit you at 75 miles an hour. Backs away to come on the drive again. All eyes on the number two seed. Deflected there though off the razor blade and not causing as much damage as we thought it might early on here. Bit of a surprise. The Rose family have put together a wonderful. And that's the first damage significantly we've seen. And the Predator's front is buckled. Look at that. Almost ripped off there the aluminium covered Teflon shield of the Predator. In the middle of the arena and just trying to stay away from trouble. Little lunch from Razor Blade bravely on him. No disc up inside, bouncing down. The blade, the disc still turns. And again on the attack on Razor Blade. And Razor Blade just sitting there. I wonder if it's been immobilized in the arena for now. Just rather cunningly or stupidly trying to draw in those discord. There's the Predator from Manchester doing battle with Razor Blade. And he comes in the disc and something's been ripped right out of the Predator there. The front buckled, lifted, torn. And the very innards, the machinery now beginning to fly from the Predator. Barry and his nephews Christopher and Stephen from St Mary's School. It doesn't look as if there's much life in Razor Blade either, which means the hit notice can now have fun that the batteries come out of Predator there. On the arena floor, the batteries out of Predator. I think that uh, Razor Blade's in all sorts of problems as well. The battery has smashed the smithereens. Smoking and in smithereens. Who goes out of those soon? Hypnodisc batters everything. The only saving grace for Razor Blade is that it sustained less damage. So, Hypnodisc and Razor Blade go through. Christopher and Stephen, it was your job to kick the shins of the Hypnodisc team. What happened? They weren't in our booth. Oh, <laughs> you were going to, weren't you? Yeah. Nah, they're good sportsmen. But just check out the damage done by the disc. How do you feel about that? So much work's gone into it. I know. Well, it's quite disappointing, but, I mean, it's a really good robot, this. There's a lot of damage. What are you feeling right now? We went out in a bit of style, anyway, against him, because he's so good anyway, but still a bit upset. I have to say, I saw that fire guard coming. When I saw you with the roundup, I thought, oh, no, I've seen what that robot can do. But you put up a good show for us, and we love you for that. Come back next wars. Yeah, we'll